Hi, I'm Olivia Black. Um, I recently just returned home from serving my mission in the Philippines Baguio Mission. I will be going to BYU starting in January and hopefully studying geography. Um, hi, I'm Sarah Rackham. Um, I live in Virginia. I've been here my whole life for about 20 years um, and I work as a laser technician. I'm Gael Sawadogo. Um, I've been here about 11, 12 years. I'm currently studying network engineering at uh, NOMA. So. Okay, well, we'll go ahead and get started. I don't know where you can watch. Just talk watch. Okay. So today I'd just like to talk a little bit about the gospel of Jesus Christ um, and how it affects our lives. And even though we're members of the church, I know that the more that we learn about the gospel of Jesus Christ, we can more fully feel his um, presence in our lives. So hopefully we can have a spiritual experience too. To start off, we'll just read from page number one. Um, Sarah, would you mind reading the first box here? Yeah. You can live the gospel of Jesus Christ by developing faith in Jesus Christ, repenting, being baptized, and receiving the Holy Ghost, enduring to, to the end. Thank you. So those are the first um, five principles of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I know that we've all had faith in Christ, at least enough to repent and be baptized and become confirmed to become members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So let's continue to read. Guy, would you read the last paragraph here, starting at after? After you learn and follow the first principles and ordinances of the gospel, you seek to follow Christ's example throughout the remainder of your life. This continued faithfulness is called enduring to the end. So as I said, we've done the first few principles, but it says after that we've, we've done these things, the next step that we take is we seek to continue to follow Christ's example. So for you, Gael, how do you seek to follow Christ's example in your life? By constantly asserting my place in life. So whether that be where my parents need me to be, society needs me to be, that's a good place to start, I think. Mm -hmm. And how do you know where you need to be in your life at this moment? I think I think uh, I think I'm at the, I'm, I'm probably at the best place. Uh, Sometimes it's hard to know with all these outward worldly influences, but for you, like, how do you know where Heavenly Father wants you to be? By looking around myself. Um, my parents, they love where I'm at, whether that be mentally or wonderful gift from Heavenly Father that can help us continue on the right path. For you, Sarah, how do you seek to follow Christ's example in your life? Um, my strongest thing that I use would be my faith and the scriptures. Um, growing up, my dad always had us read family scriptures, and coming from a two-faith family, it's been very difficult to know as a child what's going on. So we had scripture study with my dad, and there were certain scriptures in the Book of Mormon that just really stood out to me and I was like, wow, I so know where I'm supposed to be and this is the right church. And I continue to use my faith to strive on that straight and narrow path. And um, we were always, he always asked us questions. He was like, well, Sarah, um, what would Jesus do in your situation? What would he do? And so that question is always ponders. It's always in the back of my mind on replay. Like, is this something that Jesus would do. If he were standing in front of me, would I be doing this if he were in front of me? So I always kind of use those thoughts to think about my actions and to think if I am where I want to be. That's 
Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, we'll go ahead and turn to page 14 in the pamphlet. And we'll read a section here about enduring to the end. And I loved how you used the straight and narrow path. Like, how do we continue on that? So we're in the stage of enduring to the end. So before we read this paragraph, um, I want you to be thinking about the blessings that are promised um, in this section of the pamphlet. So if you can notice those things as we read it. Gail, could you read up the second paragraph, Enduring to the End? Enduring to the end brings direction, peace, and happiness to your life. You will feel the joy of trying to become more like Jesus Christ as you serve and help those around you. You will better understand your relationship with your Father in Heaven and feel His per perfect love for you. You will feel hope and a sense of purpose in an often unhappy and troubled world. So what's maybe a blessing that stuck out to you here? Why did that one stick out to you? Uh, I, for maybe with an exception of the last five months or so, uh, I've probably been through some of uh, the most difficult things uh, in my life, actually. To the point to where I didn't think I had a purpose. So <laughs> I kind of understand what it is to not have a sense of purpose, to not <laughs> to not feel like you know you belong anywhere. So that's a wonderful blessing that we can have. And you've seen the contrast in your life of what it means to have the gospel of Jesus Christ and that hope and joy that you receive from it versus not having it. Absolutely. How about for you, Sarah? What? Um, just in the first sentence, just the word peace. Peace is just such a strong, overwhelming feeling. And I think when we are so caught up in all the worldly stuff going around us, we don't have the opportunity to really feel the peace that the gospel brings us. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of the times people overlook that. But when you really sit down and you listen to a talk at a sacrament meeting, or you listen to um, someone bearing their testimony, you really have the chance to feel that peace and to feel what that means to you. I love that. Um, how do you think that we can kind of drown out those worldly, those worldly things that kind of take over our peace that we have? Um, well, for me, I am an avid overthinker, so I tend to overthink anything and everything possible. So I just have to remember in that moment, what's the most important thing? So when you're in church, is the most important thing what's maybe going on on the internet with some celebrity, or is it what you are feeling in during someone's testimony or during someone's talk? So you have to consider and weigh your, and not weigh your options, but per se, but you have to really think what is the most important thing. And when you're in church, one of the most important things, if not the most important, is to feel the spirit and to be connected to Heavenly Father and to Jesus Christ since we are in the house of the Lord. Yeah, Heavenly Father is always giving us opportunities to feel the spirit. And sometimes it's really just up to us to take those opportunities and really like apply it to ourselves. So. Let's read it in the Book of Mormon because it explains much better than I can what are other things that we can do to receive these blessings in our lives. So we'll go to Alma 37, verse 6. So attaining those, those promised blessings that we read can seem like a big, a big task. But verse 6 here kind of breaks it down a little bit for us. Sarah, would you mind reading mm -hmm. verse 6? Now you may suppose that this is foolishness in me, but behold, I say unto you that by small and simple things are great things brought to pass, and small means in many instances doth confound the wise. So small and simple things can um, bring to pass the greatest miracles. So I want you guys to think for just a second, maybe 10 seconds, about a trial that you have in your life. And maybe try and think of some small thing that you could do 
to increase your peace or your joy and your hope. But it will help you endure to the end through that trial. So just think for a second and then maybe you can share with us what's something small that you can do. Well, I'm currently studying and uh, um, the test is getting reformed in, in a couple of months. So I kind of have uh, a due date, if you will, or else I'd have to learn a lot more than what I've already learned. And I'm constantly learning new things and I'm aware of that. So what I haven't done is read newer material so what I what I was planning to do is uh, while I'm taking practice tests and things like that like I go and outline the specific places I need for um, I need to you know uh, focus on more so that's that's something I haven't gotten into yet but that's what I was planning to do like tomorrow focus on small like things in your study. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I like how you're kind of applying the scriptures to something in your day-to-day -day life, um, which is school studies. You know, Like what you're learning here can really apply there. Um, and maybe you could do the same thing in your scripture study. Yeah, I, I read every day. Yeah, so continue that. And um, maybe something you could say is just to read before you study. Um, just to remind yourself of that goal that you have to focus on the small life. What about for you, Claire? Um, for me, it's probably a bigger trial that's been weighing on me for a long time. But it's for me, is how to deal exactly with death. And so I had a friend of mine, 19, passed away suddenly a few months ago. And I just did not deal with it well. So I have a hard time dealing with death. And you know, as kids, we're always taught in the church about the plan of salvation. So we ultimately know the outcome. Mm -hmm. But it's those steps in between that you that I struggle to deal with because I just feel like it's all around me that everyone that I know just dies. But I know that's not the truth because I know ultimately God has a plan and I struggle and I guess I overlook it in a way. So I just need to study the plan of salvation more carefully and really take into account the blessings that it gives me. I love that. So what is something that you could maybe do this week to, to apply? Um, probably for one, I get so wrapped up in my life that I often don't study the scriptures as much as I should or I don't pray as much as I should. So trying to do that even at work, if I'm not with somebody, I can just pull it up on my phone, pull it up on the computer and just take a minute so I can really feel that peacefulness because I know that that will come anytime, no matter where I am, if I read the scriptures. Awesome. So will you do that this week? This Yes. <laughs> Will you do that as well, Gail? Yes, I need to pray more. Awesome. I know that you'll be blessed as you um, continue to do that, and that you'll see that hope and that change as you endure through these trials. Say these names, Christ, amen.